So generally speaking, you have, there's three products here that, uh, and then a fourth one that is just a wallet aggregator. But these three, they are, you know, financial products that you can use at your disposal. All right. So essentially this one here, this is Fiat. Okay. Uh, this is your DeFi bank for Pulse Chain, right? This is tailor made for the community. Um, you know, it is specifically made to, uh, you know, be your bank. It is your line of credit when you need it. It is your place to borrow funds as you see fit, right? If you're trying to uh, invest in a business or start up some sort of venture that you're doing, right? This is a place that is useful to you if you have assets on Pulse Chain, right? So, you know, for example, let's say you uh, you want to buy that Ferrari, right? And uh, the market is getting really fluffy, all right? And you're you're a uh, you got eight figures in your account, and uh, it's time to start buying some cool shit, right? Well, if you didn't have, if you, exactly, Lambo, if you didn't want to uh, sell your assets, uh, what you could do is you could just take out a loan, right? Uh, and you could deposit your pulse. You can go borrow some stable coins, bridge it out. You can go buy that Ferrari, right? Uh, or you could be productive, um, and you could start a business. You could, uh, you know, you could have lines of credit. Basically, you could use this for, you know, payroll if you needed. Right, you're just borrowing against your assets. Uh, it is important to know that you, these are over collateralized loans, so you have to put up more money than you're able to uh, borrow against. Right, um, that's generally the the concept here. Now, one of our uh, biggest clients, if I'm not mistaken, is Coast. Right, uh, they're they're self funded. Um, you know, the uh, Stoic guys, they're they're doing a fantastic job with Coast. Um, they didn't raise any money, uh, however, they have a lot of exposure to Pulse Chain. And to, to run their business, what they're doing is, you know, they're depositing on fiat and they're opening up lines of credit to, uh, to continue their operations. Right. And, uh, you know, do everything that they need to do. Um, and they're a great client, right. Uh, you can see, uh, here on the dashboard, the range of coins that you can deposit, which also means you can also borrow all of these coins. Um, there's various deposit rates and, uh, borrow rates. Okay. That spread between what you see as deposit APY and variable rate APY, that is the uh, called the net interest margin that's paid to the stakers of the fiat token, right? So uh, right now, obviously, Pulse Chain isn't extremely liquid, um, but you know when when the bull comes and we get uh, lots of liquidity, you'll start to see these deposits, you know, perhaps reach the eight figures at some point, point. Um, and you know people are paying three percent to borrow. Hex or something like this, or to borrow a stable coin. Um, and, you know, 3% on eight figures, that's ah, pretty decent, right? Uh, especially for a stable coin, um, just for being a depositor, right? Uh, now, the only truly single sided staking that you can do right now with PulseX would be on fiat. Um, you know, obviously it's not a gigantic rate, but it is literally the only place where you could get pure single sided staking. So, um, people how, how does that work? Like when people say, what do you mean single sign staking with, with fiat? Like how, how is that similar to what, what we want on, or a lot, what a lot of people want, at least on PulseX? Yeah. So what people are looking for on PulseX is they lock up their, their pulse, their PulseX coins. Right. And then they get something for free and they don't have to do any work. They don't have to have any sort of impermanent loss. They're literally just taking their tokens, time locking them, and they're getting something for free. Right. Um, on fiat. Uh, much like how a bank works, if you deposit your um, your dollars or something into a savings account uh, or a CD, um, you know you get a deposit rate. Okay, um, on fiat, like same thing with the bank. You deposit on fiat. You're being paid by the borrowers to deposit your assets so that they can borrow them. So they're paying you back, right? The money is coming from the depositors. Or I'm sorry, from the borrowers, just like at a bank. So. But yes. So to just connect the parallel, so on PulseX, you know, you would put your PulseX there, you would stake it, you would earn uh, some other token, community token, however, you know, however that's going to work or, or will work when it happens. And on fiat, again, just to make it clear, you can put down PulseX, you can put down other coins, and then you earn, you need to clarify that. Yeah, so you would literally just get the coins that you've deposited, right? So uh, let's go to my dashboard. I had, I think I have a couple of loans. So I've got Pulse and Die as deposits right now, right? And I borrowed some hex. Now I'm making, you know, 1.38% on my die, right? Uh, last week I was making 20% um, on my die. Somebody was really borrowing a lot mm -hmm. of die the, the other day. Um, and so it's obviously variable, right? Depends on use. Okay. Uh, more use, 
or you pay. Okay. Um, and then with Pulse, uh, you know, the other day it was maybe 1%. Okay. Um, and uh, so somebody's obviously paid back some other loans. Um, they've consolidated their, their debt, whatever they're doing, right? Uh, it's just the market. Okay. Um, but yeah, so these, these deposits that I have up here, uh, I get more of those tokens because bar people are borrowing. People are borrowing Pulse. People are borrowing DAI. So um, naturally, I'm going to be paid to be a depositor. Okay. So that's kind of how that works, right? And you can see that I've borrowed some hex. So I'm currently paying um, the people that have deposited hex. I'm paying them uh, some interest for borrowing this hex here. Um, and uh, you know these loans are uh, they slowly grow over time, right? So it's not like there's a payment plan or you know a period. It's basically verse. It's it's basically uh, based on your collateral versus your debt, right? So once it gets to an unsafe level, it'll start the, you know, it, your your assets will be put up for liquidation and uh, a liquidator, which anybody can run a liquidation bot, uh, will take your coins and start using your collaterals to buy back your debt on the market and pay off your loans, okay? And it'll do that in little chunks until either you have uh, reached a safe uh, health factor, which is how we calculate um, your collateral versus your debt, or until you're liquidated, right? So one mm -hmm. of those two things, and it'll happen relatively quick, okay? Um, but yeah, so... Well, I just want to say on the, on the deposit side, so for this, to get back to pulse, uh, the pulse or the die that uh, you you deposited an earning, earning the APY on, you, you would just withdraw, and then they would just come back into your total? Or how do, how do you get the coins back that you've earned, I guess? Yeah, so you just uh, you just withdraw, right? And um, basically, uh, you can see my my balance is just growing ever so slowly, right? Uh, you see the number ticking up there. Um, so you know, uh, I withdraw my coins. I, I should have like a very small, uh, you know, decimal place uh, more pulse than I did when I deposited, right? Uh, just naturally because um, uh, people are borrowing the coins and their debt is growing. So my deposit is also growing. Okay. Now there, uh, in, in this case, you might ask, okay, well, uh, what if they never pay back their loans? Okay. Well, that's a great question. If they never pay back their loans. Um, there could be a situation where, uh, people could withdraw uh, a bunch of coins and then it would be just left where they owe the platform this amount of coins. Okay. And then they will be charged out the ass, uh, on interest. Okay. Until, it catches up to their collateral once again, or until the price goes back down and then their collateral is sold to pay their loan off from the spot market, right? So those two things would have to happen for uh, you to get the rest of those deposits out. So that's what's going to ask the risk as far as like depositing stuff. You're, you're earning the APY. It's way different than the borrowing, All right? Borrowing, you get liquidated, the deposit side where you're earning the APY, the risk is, I mean, it's contract it, risk, right? Uh, yeah, so if okay. there was a bug in the Aave code, um, uh, or something that the audit that we've done on Fiat that wasn't caught or something like that, then yeah, there's contract risk, right? Um, there's risk that, uh, all the shit goes to zero, right? Like, uh, you know, that's, that's a risk. Uh, if you're borrowing, yes, you're open to, um, if you're not borrowing, uh, responsibly, uh, if you're using, uh, you know, you're borrowing your max and everything out. Yeah, of course you're going to be exposed to liquidations a lot easier than somebody um, that's borrowing responsibly, of course. But yeah, generally speaking, you know, if you're a depositor, you're basically uh, thinking about contract risk, or let's say you have a bridge stable coin, okay, uh, and then the bridge goes down, okay, and you know you're you're deposited here, so uh, obviously, um, you know that that causes a, a an issue for uh, the platform if the if the bridge were to go down and the the stable coins were to implode, right? So, hmm. yeah, those are the risks that you have here. Um, but I mean, is there any, I was going to say, is there any waiting period? Like, is there like a trading trading window risk of like, hey, I want to make this trade. I need these coins right now, but I need to wait some time or is this withdrawal and, hmm. and you get it back? No, uh, you withdraw. It you know it takes a couple uh, seconds to process transactions. It's just as fast as the blockchain. Um, okay. Yeah. It's well, not I was thinking big. if you were staking your uh, fiat coins, there's, there's like a seven day deal on that though. Yes. Now that's different a different part. Question. Yeah. So if you're staking, right? Yeah. So if you're taking your fiat tokens and you're wanting to get a share of the revenue, 
Um, yeah, and you you stake your coins. Now, there's no set time locking feature, so it's not like hex. It's not like you spent a specific date and time, and then you have a 14 day window to end your hex stake. Right? It doesn't work like that. Basically, you can stake your fiat tokens, and then they just sit there. All right. Now, when you want them out, you go and do unstake now, right? And then you you select the amount. Uh, you'd press unstake, and then a transaction will pop up. Uh, you confirm that, right? And then you have a un unlocking period, and you have to wait 14 days. Okay. Now, after those 14 days have passed, you have a withdrawal window. You have seven days to withdraw your your stake uh, tokens. Okay. Now, through this entire time, through the unlocking period, and up until you actually withdraw your tokens, you'll always be accruing uh, extra tokens. Okay. Um, and uh, once you remove those tokens, then you know your your uh, your APYs and stuff. Obviously, that goes away. Um, as in, you're you're no longer earning anything. Okay. But uh, you can claim the rewards throughout the entire process. There's no penalties or anything like that. Uh, if you don't unstake, it acts like nothing ever happened, and it just goes back to being staked. And then you'd have to reinitiate reinitiate mm -hmm. the uh, the transaction to uh, start the unlocking window or the unlocking period again. So. On, on the rewards, I see PHUX, and I see a bunch of coins, PLS, PLSX, but they're PH on the prefix. What, what does that mean? Yeah, so that means that they're deposits. So the, the way that you uh, know that, let's say, you have uh, deposits, uh, is it's called PHWDI, PHWUSDC, uh, PHX, okay, PH PulseX, right? That just represents your deposits. That's your token of receipt for your deposits. Now, what what you can do about this is if you're, let's say you're in a pinch, right? Uh, and you need some money on another account, okay? Um, and you have a different account that has deposits already. What you could do is you could send yourself those tokens, all right? You can send yourself those PH tokens and you can increase your collateral on this other account that is in a risky situation, or you can send these to your friends. Um, uh, and then one day, obviously, when it's enabled, you'll be able to uh, deposit these on you know, PHUX. Um, and you know you could provide liquidity with them and you can make a market with these PH receipts of deposits, okay? Uh, but those are coins, they're just receipts. Okay, receipts. Yeah, I, I just imagine you look at it and say, okay, what is it? PH? Is that a platform? Like it's a receipt token. So they're not con they're not convertible. Basically, can can you just use them on the platform then? Yeah, yeah. So you redeem them on on uh, fiat, right? So you know, redeem, okay. Uh, I would claim my rewards, uh, and then it would just act like a deposit. It would just be added to my deposits, and then I can withdraw that. That's how that works. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, any more on fiat or do you want to, again, I want to make it very clear the difference, what you would do on fiat versus fame. Yeah. Uh, so to kind of sum it up, this is your bank, right? This is not your NASDAQ. This is where you're going to your Morgan, your JP Morgan Chase. This is your, uh, you know, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. Um, this is where you're borrowing assets. Okay. This is where you, you can, you know, do you take out a mortgage right now? Obviously you'd have to have more uh, in your deposits to borrow against, right? You're not getting leverage here. Uh, however you can, um, uh, you can also do, uh, what's called, uh, you know, flash loans to increase your exposure to assets where basically, uh, you know, you kind of do the looping method, which is like buying or borrowing an asset, then going on the market, buying it, depositing it, borrowing more of the asset, going on the market, buying it, depositing it again, uh, borrowing more of the asset, et cetera. You know, you can do that with a flash loan and do it in one transaction. However, I'm not smart enough to do that. But uh, if you're competent enough, you can you know set up these flash loans. Uh, you can do that and, and, and increase your exposure to the assets via leverage. However, it's much easier to do it on Fame if you wanted leverage. Like, you know, it's just way easier on Fame to do that. Um, so you know, yeah, you can do that. Um, but essentially, this is this is where you're going to be opening up lines of credit, right? This is where you can be a depositor. You can get. Uh, probably the lowest risk in terms of uh, an APY and without having any sort of impermanent loss, um, uh, you know, uh, but yeah, essentially this is your bank of Pulse Chain, all right? Um, and then so I guess we could go to uh, PHUX. Uh, this is the balancer fork of Pulse Chain. This is uh, your one-stop shop for all of the, uh, the altcoins that you care about, right? Uh, your, 
the unique advantage of PHUX over um, a classic uh, V2 style liquidity setup would be having uh, over two tokens per, per pool, which is uh, on, on PHUX. Uh, you can do up to eight, right? Because we're a fork and balancer. Um, we also have uh, stable swap pools. So um, very valuable in terms of finding uh, decent prices or the most efficient pricing for your stable coins, right? Uh, because before this, um, I vividly remember uh, before the uh, PHUX came about, uh, you know, very many uh, opportunities where uh, USDT and USDC were worth less than a dollar. So that means that you could have bought those at a discount uh, and arbitrage those and made some money, right? Uh, and that's a very inefficient market. That's not very helpful for anybody other than the guy that is buying from uh, the guy that's mispricing uh, and selling at a loss, right? Because um, that's the loser there in that situation. So this kind of helps everybody out uh, by banking in a more efficient market via the stable swap pool, uh, which we call the uh, bridge stable pool. Uh, and this basically has USDT, USDC, and DAI all in one pool, right? Uh, and there's $4 million in there. Uh, so any, anybody with size, this is probably what they're going to be using if they need to uh, swap stable coins, if they're, let's say they're coming in with DAI only, right? Uh, and they use a router. Uh, what the router will do is take that DAI. Uh, it'll swap it for the other stable coins kind of um, uh, in tandem, tandem, right? And then spread it out to then go into the liquidity pools versus USDT impulse, USDC impulse. Uh, and die and pulse, right? And it'll probably do it to where it's probably 40% die. Uh, and then you have your 20, um, maybe, uh, I would say, uh, maybe 30%, uh, 30 and 30, right? So um, probably look something like that, right? If they were just coming and die, they would go into, you know, the router, and then it would route them in, in those pools, and then they'd get the best price that they possibly could have, and they would have to have gone through uh, PHUX, right? Um, so that's really useful for uh, the bigger guys when they're coming in, right? Um, and obviously you'll see uh, the CTS stable pool, uh, which is currently the only native stable on Pulse Chain. Um, and uh, yeah, so they have a stable pool as well. Uh, it's doing really well. Um, and you'll see that uh, there's the RH Maxi pool with a bunch of uh, RH coins. Kind of yeah, I, I was going to ask Buck, I forgot though, when are you going to put a, a picture of me, my avatar on the RH Maxi pool? No, it should I, be right I there, right? waiting for it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, sir, you can make your do. Own yeah, and you can have your own custom weights, and you can start your own, you know, community liquidity going, and uh, perhaps even get a farm, right? I mean, because you see these these APYs over here, right? Uh, like those are some pretty high numbers, some of them. Okay, um, but yeah. So to continue here, I mean, you'll see well, Alex Hedron Maxi. Uh, well, you can see all. The I just want to just on the stablecoin real quick too. I mean. Go through go through the Alex one because I think it's important and the Maximus one. I want to cover that, but also the stablecoin earning yield on hey, if you don't think the stablecoin is going to go to zero and you're going to you can earn 20, 40, 30, 50 percent or whatever, that's kind of crazy. Like that's kind of like a you know, that's some passive, you know many passive. people call that a no, no brainer, you know. Yeah, that is some passive, passive income, sir. That is, uh, yes, that's creme de creme. That's good stuff right there. Uh, if I do say so yeah. myself. Um, but yeah, so as I was saying, you know, with the, the Alex Hedron Maxi pool, uh, a lot of these coins, um, the altcoins of the community, uh, they're pretty liquid, uh, especially right after the fork. Um, uh, you know, it's kind of like took all the air out of the system. Um, and, uh, you know, there was no logos, there was no support from PulseX. Even uh, when we launched Fiat, it was 10 hours after the fork. We sent the PulseX dev our logo immediately. Uh, I was like, hey, man. Um, Here's our stuff. You know, when can you add it? And then no response, right? Uh, no, no reply. They read the messages, but just nothing. Okay. Um, however, you'll you'll find that all the logos are here. Uh, all the third party guys that they have some sort of pools here, uh, and a lot of them have gauges, right? They're getting uh, PHUX rewards in these farms. Um, and I think the best example is probably the Maximus guys. Uh, those are, I would I would say they were, they were probably lacking a lot of liquidity. Um, especially after the fork, okay? Um, but now, uh, you know, there's 700K in liquidity there uh, between all those those coins, right? And they're probably priced pretty efficiently um, and they're earning a decent APY on top of 
all of the hex that they're accruing in those those uh, you know wrapped stakes, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I think the uh, the shining example here would be uh, these bridge stable coins and uh, the CTS stable pool, uh, and that cool. truly passive income, right, on these farms. Can, can you explain that? Like, how how can you earn such high APR on stuff that you know is stable coins and like lower you would think lower risk things than other coins that may be more volatile like where where, where does the thieves come from dylan like the the where's the ETH come from richard or where's the ETH go use it in that voice where did the fees come from dylan yeah so i mean that's a great question right so these are some pretty high apys and uh they will not last forever okay um obviously as time goes on and the market realizes that uh this is stupidly easy uh, free yield, uh, the void will fill up because uh, you could kind of look at it like that, right? Um, money will go where it's treated best. And these are kind of incentives via PHUX uh, rewards, right? This is like a farm on PulseX. It's very similar to, you know, PulseX farm, okay? However, the difference is uh, pretty key to know. Uh, you can see there's two APYs here or two APRs here. Right, you have a 16% and you have a 39%. Right now, when you get this PHUX, uh, you can either get it via uh, if you're lucky enough to get an airdrop and get some, you could have gotten it that way. Um, if uh, you're currently providing liquidity in these farms and you've staked, you know, into the farm and you're earning PHUX, you could have gotten it that way, or you have to buy it right off the market. Now, uh, to get these higher APY numbers, what you need to do is take your PHUX, right. And then you place it in the prime PHUX liquidity pool, all right? And then you would stake that liquidity pool token for a duration of time, up to a year, right? Um, and your goal here is to have your liquidity match, your, your percentage of the liquidity farm match the percentage of your, uh, it's called P, P or VE PHUX, which is your staked prime PHUX tokens here, okay? Um, let's see if I can see mine. Uh, let's go to VEPHX here. Let's see. Uh, so you can see my my VEPHX. So I have 0.2% of the supply, right? So if I'm providing liquidity in some of these pools, if I wanted to get the 2.5x bonus on some of these farms here, let's go back to, let's say, the bridge table pool, right? So I would need to have, you know, to get the 21% APY, I would need to have the equivalent of 0.02% of the farm, right? And then I'd be able to get that uh, that bonus. And obviously, my stake would have to be maxed out as well. Um, uh, my VEPHUX, right? Uh, and so, you know, there's a little bit of uh, utility here. Uh, and I, I also didn't even mention that the when you do stake your, to your tokens, your prime PHUX and stuff, you get a share of the revenue generated on the platform. Uh, so I think it's roughly half. Um, and uh, that's distributed on a weekly basis every Thursday. Um, and so you get, uh, you know, you get cash flows, you get uh, liquidity boosts on your, on your tokens. Um, and, uh, you know, you get uh, some very nice yield um, for being a depositor on PHUX. So very good utility. Uh, we've bootstrapped um, a couple of projects here, uh, you know, with either custom weightings uh, or, um, just being creative or being a stable coin, right? So uh, really looking forward, uh, I think for the next editions of the Pulse Chain ecosystem would be uh, the Liquid Loans guys, the Power City guys, uh, the Mentor guys, right? Uh, and uh, we look forward to having the liquidity over here uh, and, you know, especially for the stable coins, right? Cannot be understated. Having that stable swap pool is essential, right? Um, you know, so we really look forward to that. But, yep. Yes. That is PHUX. Uh, do you have any questions for me, RH Max, or am I going too fast? No, I'm just looking through the chat too. Uh, I think we only had a question on famous a while back that I can uh, put up once we get into that. But uh, well, we got here. We go fast. Uh, when Ethereum PHUX? Yeah, that's a great question that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. I. I, I I play with PHUX a lot, so I, I don't have a whole lot of questions as far as it goes. I mean, it's definitely uh, one of the one of the platforms that, again, like you said, the stablecoin swap, uh, earning earning APRs, uh, yeah. you can lock to the farm stuff. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, and then the uh, you know then we have Fame. Okay, the 
arguably maybe the bell of the ball, perhaps. Um, uh, I mean, right now it's creating the most fees. Um, but famous or fame is uh, your your one stop shop for leverage trading on Pulse Chain, right? Uh, it is your place to uh, you know hedge your risks. It is your place to go risk on. Uh, it is your place to uh, short the Ponzi like a true uh, Bitcoin maxi and yell at Richard that, ha, I shorted your, I shorted your coin, man. And uh, I'm making all this fucking money, right? Uh, this is your place. He doesn't read emails or anything. I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, maybe uh, if we sent no a radio pigeon, or pigeon, you know, with a Twitter post or something, no. RH maxis can be very, or, I'm sorry, RH maxis. I mean, uh, the Bitcoin maxis, they can be very uh, uh, creative, I guess. Right. Um, it's true. It's true. Anyhow, right. This is your place. Okay. Um, what's really cool about, uh, famous, it's a GMX fork. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with GMX, it was the darling of the bear market, uh, throughout 2022. Um, it produced, uh, roughly, uh, $130 million in fees over the span of a year. Okay. And that's hard cash. That is not Ponzinomics, you know, self-inflating, uh, you know, stake your coins and get more coins. Shit. No, that was in uh, ETH and stable coins, okay? That was cash. Um, so that's really impressive, okay? And it performed the best in the bear market of 2022. So, uh, you know, we're, we're talking, this was, it was worked really well throughout the uh, the shadow banks blowing up. Um, uh, you know, like, uh, obviously we all know about Voyager, Celsius, BlockFi, FTX, okay? Um, so it, it did really well during all of that fiasco tried and true it worked really well so uh you know the ph team figured that gmx was uh the next thing to have in the lineup so here we are now the uh cool thing about uh fame is uh again just like all the other products you can have a share in the uh revenue generated on the the platform right uh so kind of similar to how fiat works um you know same way uh you can lock up your fame tokens uh, for, you know, however long, if we go to, uh, the dashboard here, you can see, uh, let's see here. Where's my stakes at fame squid. Okay. There you go. Um, so yeah, you have the 14 day unlocking period. You have the seven day, uh, withdrawal window, same thing, same exact way. Now, uh, you're getting paid on fame. Uh, you're getting paid PHLP which is the liquidity token of the platform. Uh, and that's redeemable for all of these assets, right? You can do uh, a bunch of the assets or you can just do one depending on your, uh, you know, what you want to do, right? Um, and then you're also getting a little bit of PHUX as a thank you, I guess. And I've been told that the PHUX stuff for both Fiat and Fame um, for just staking is, uh, is not going to last for a long time. So enjoy it while it does, okay? Um, but yeah, uh, and kind of just that's the staking portion now. However, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with um, just the general, you know, the general look of what it looks like to, you know, be on a margin trading exchange. Sure, um, something. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, obviously it should look familiar to all you guys, okay? Uh, I can open up a long here. Let's, uh, let's go max bidding long. Uh, with 20 bucks here. Let's do, yeah, $23. So we're going to open up a $600 position on Hex. It's going to hope it goes to the moon and I make it all back. Okay. Um, you know, obviously this is a joke, right? Uh, you know, don't be going long with your entire portfolio. Uh, you probably won't even be able to do that just because of the available liquidity anyways. But hmm. for all intents and purposes, we're going to go, uh, we're going to go long it, here. And, and, and how much leverage and can you kind of go through the, the different knobs and stuff here? Yeah, so uh, you can see some things here. You can see long, short. You can see that I can short hex. Uh, now, to short, you need a stable coin, okay? If you try and short it with hex, it won't let you. You have to use a stable coin. Uh, you have the option of using DAI, USDC, or, or USDT, okay? Uh, if you want to go long, you have to use the asset that you want to go long. It is a perpetual exchange, a perpetual swap exchange. So that means you use hex to go long hex. You use pulse X to go long pulse X, okay? Um, and obviously you have the leverage slider, which, uh, you know, obviously lowered leverage is less risky, higher leverage is a lot more risky. Okay. 
What, what, what would happen to, for example, in this one, you know, you got 20 X looks like leverage, like how, you know, how much could you uh, uh, stand to gain from one X versus 10 X versus 20 X in, in this particular position? Yeah. Uh, so the 20 bucks leverage works in, uh, in pretty cool ways. So let's say, let's use 10 X cause that's a really easy number to do. All right. Uh, let's say, uh, use 10 X leverage. Now a 10% position, or I'm sorry, a 10% move in the market on a 10 X leverage position can either wipe out your account or it can double your account. Okay. So a 10 X leverage, 10% move up or down can wipe you out means that means liquidated. Okay. Or it can double your, uh, your, your, your collateral, right? So like if I did a thousand dollars and I did 10 X, um, if uh, the price went down, you know, 10%, I'd lose that thousand dollars. Now, if the price goes up 10, 10%, I would now have $2,000. Okay. Um, so obviously as the leverage moves up, uh, it takes less and less for, uh, price movement for you to either double your position or, uh, you wipe yourself out. Right. So let's say 25 X, which is pretty high. That's a, that's a very high leverage. Okay. Um, you know, a 4% move would wipe out your position or double it. Okay. Uh, and then if we're going down to two X leverage, then it would take a 50% move to, uh, wipe you out or double your position. All right. So, so, so just yeah. in that too, how has this stuff become final? Like, is it, do you need to, you know, uh, pull out at a certain time, like, like when you see, when you're looking at the charts, how does it, or just when it hits a certain threshold, when it hits 50% or, or something? What do you mean? You know what I'm saying? So for example, you do 10 X and there's a it pulse, you, you do hex uh, on 10 X leverage and then it goes up 12% or something. Does right. it automatically, do you, do you just get paid the double, uh, the double, for example, or you just like no, see you it in your account? Pulling, yeah. Yeah, or okay, it. that's what I'm saying. Like, like, when is this stuff final? Is it up to the user to say, okay, I'm gonna yeah. stay, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna, nope. I'm gonna get out? That's right. Yeah, it's up to you. Yeah. So you got to close the position now. You can open up a uh, a trigger, uh, which when I open the position, um, uh, when I my position open, yeah, let me just open up a position. Okay. Uh, let's do max long, max bidding. Okay, we're gonna go max bid on uh, hex long here. Uh, please, market maker gods. Don't liquidate me. Um, <laughs> I borrowed this money on fiat. If you didn't notice that, right? Let's let's just go remind everybody. Okay. <laughs> this is borrowed money. Okay. Uh, okay. You know, Twenty bucks. Very useful to know, right? If you don't have uh, hex and you didn't want to buy any, uh, but you wanted exposure, and you have deposits on fiat, you can borrow the hex to go long, right? Hmm. You can do that. Um, and uh, we kind of made it clear here where you can buy hex on. PHUX, where you click on that little logo right there, it takes you right to PHUX, or you click on that little logo, it takes you to borrow page. Okay. Um, so let's go long hex. Um, and let's break this down here. So you'll see that my leverage is 30X. Uh, my liquidation price is uh, not far from here. Uh, you'll see that I've been, I'm going to be paying $2.47 or $2.47 in fees. My collateral is 20 bucks. Okay. Um, now, if you can see here, this is $23. So I'll be paying. Uh, roughly 10%. Okay. That's 10% in, uh, for off my collateral for that fee. Right now that is the cost of leverage, right? When you're opening these leverage positions, you're paying 40 basis points on the whole position. Right. So it would act, I'm being charged a fee for $600 of leverage or $600 position, um, on this open and on the close side. All right. Uh, and then you can see my borrowing rate right here which would be 0.0068% per hour. Um, and now we're going to open the position. And uh, I suggest when you guys open these positions, um, you'll see that my my shit is way higher than yours. It's because I've, I have custom gas settings and I really want all my uh, actions to go through on, on Pulse Chain. Um, however, if you just use typically uh, aggressive gas settings, usually your, your, your positions will open up, uh, you know, right away. Right. Unless there's some sort of congestion going on or something like this. Um, gotcha. but what I do, I like 10 X, uh, to like 50 X mine so that, you know, I shove my shit through, I skip everybody. I go right in the front of the line. Um, but yeah, so now we're opening our position. It takes time for this stuff to load and bada bang. Uh, I just open up a long on hex. And, uh, now I can, I can go to the close here 
and I can set a trigger. So this is this this can be either a stop loss or a take profit. Okay. Hmm. So I can select the price. Let's say I want to close the maximum at let's say 0 0.008. Uh, 0 0.008. So uh, then I would be I would triple my my position here. I'd I'd win uh, 58 bucks right off my twenty dollars. So I I'd, uh, I'd get you know 282 percent P and O if I if I hit that that target right on my 30x long. Um, you can set this as a stop loss. So we could do seven two nine. So I'd, I'd lose, uh, what's the price right now? Yeah, so I'd lose uh, 9%. Okay. Um, I can set my stop loss, uh, but I'm going to use no stops and use max bidding and uh, watch this puppy go to the moon. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so I, th I think you whatever triggers is, is really a good thing to show people too, because here's stop loss, here all this stuff. But like, how do you, if you were going to do something like this, how do you actually use it? How do you prevent yourself from getting super wrecked? you can, you know, do stop losses with the triggers and otherwise. So uh, this is obviously a, a fun example, but uh, anyone out there using it trigger, like if I was going to do this, I would definitely set some triggers to, to make sure yeah. either I don't get screwed or if maybe I want to take some profit, even if it's, uh, if it doesn't, if it doesn't go to the moon or it goes somewhere close to it, you take some profit too. Yeah. And uh, another cool feature that uh, we have that doesn't exist on Pulse Chain yet is uh, limit orders. So you can have a low leverage uh, limit order uh, while you're sleeping, you can have it open up for, uh, let's say you think that on November 28th, uh, the market may go down or the market may go up. Okay. Um, so you, maybe you do a Delta neutral strategy, right? Which is kind of advanced, but basically that means you're going long and you're going short. All right. Uh, and you're, you know, you're, you're basically going to win if the market is just volatile, right? That's all you're betting on is volatility, uh, either to the upside or the downside. And that's kind of your, your bet with Delta neutral. Okay. Um, so you could do that before that news event. If there is any news, maybe there isn't, maybe that's bullish. Maybe there's news and it's bad. Okay. And it's bearish. Uh, you can do that. Um, but kind of the, the reason why I'm bringing up limit orders here is you can have, uh, you, you can have limit orders, uh, you know, in, various assets you can have them at different prices for different amounts um and you can have them to where you know if the market is volatile and it's not it's not extremely volatile in the sense where you know we're going down 50 percent in 10 minutes obviously your limits aren't going to be filled but you know if if it goes down you know 10 percent in in like or 30 percent uh in like 30 minutes then you know you can get your limits to be filled and that's very useful for people that want to buy in right on on pulse chain in general um, so that's a very, you know, that's a very useful use case, especially with the low leverage. Um, so yeah, that's great. Uh, for yeah, this that's very interesting. Limit orders using low leverage. Very interesting. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, I didn't even, uh, go on my typical, uh, my pitch here, but, uh, kind of winding it back a little bit. There's three ways where you can play this game, right? I haven't even mentioned the, uh, the third way. Uh, I've mentioned that you can be a staker basically like the equity holder at the casino. Um, uh, you know, you, you get the, the dividends or whatever, you know, as a shareholder, but you're not getting the, the crux, the creme de la creme, right? Um, you can be the, uh, you can be the, the trader, right? Which is what we just did here. Um, or you can be the house, right? You can be the liquidity provider. You can be the person that provides the liquidity for the, the traders to use, right? The traders are paying you by the hour. They're paying you when they open a position with leverage. They're paying you when they close a position. You're getting paid when they get liquidated, right? When they get liquidated, all their collateral and all their losses, they go to you, right? You're the winner in that situation. Um, just like uh, when you're the winner, you can also be the loser, right? So when these, these traders win, which sometimes they do, you're on the hook, right? It's coming out of your pocket, right? Um, and that's in the form of impermanent loss, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, but Essentially, if you wanted to provide liquidity here, um, you go to the Earn tab, you go to Provide Liquidity on Fame Protocol, and you click this button here, right? Now, our kind of uh, receipt of deposit is called PHLP, all right? Uh, and you can provide liquidity in uh, various assets. Uh, let's go to, uh, you'll see that it is a, um, 
there's target weights when you're providing this, this liquidity and there's incentives and there's disincentives uh, where, uh, and it's fee-based. So if you want to buy into the liquidity pool, you can buy in with one asset, you can buy in with a range of assets. Um, you know, it's up to you. Now, what you may care about is the fee that you're paying when you're entering this liquidity position. So as you can see, um, uh, hex is a very high fee right now. That means hex is overweight, right? So there's too much hex relative to everything else. The platform is going to disincentivize you from depositing hex, and it will in turn incentivize you to deposit something that's uh, underweight, which would be like USDT, so 0.15, 15 basis points, rather than 42 basis points for hex. Um, and, uh, so, you know, you can provide liquidity in a range of different assets, um, and, uh, you're incentivized, uh, via the targeted weights, uh, of the platform to, uh, you know, lower fees, better, better entry into PHLP and things like this. Now, uh, the unique advantage that we have over GMX is this liquidity token is tradable. Um, there is a farm on PHUX right now where you can get yield on this yield bearing asset, right? So when you have PHOP, it is constantly growing uh, in terms of uh, the NAV, right? Uh, so, you know, let's say you have a dollar worth of PHOP or one PHOP token, whatever. Um, and as time goes on, as traders are trading, um, let's say the market goes sideways and uh, all of the prices of the assets stay the same, but people are buying and selling. So the NAV, the the, uh, the nominal assets under value is uh, is um, is increasing, right? That means that your PHLP token is increasing in value. So the, the naturally the price will go up. That is kind of reflecting either uh, the market going up or the fees increasing, right? Uh, so you know it's kind of nuanced, but essentially more fees uh, better for you, right? Obviously. So and then you'd be able to withdraw more assets out of the pool naturally okay um because you know like any other liquidity position the supply of the phlp token or you know like uh the token that you get as a deposit receipt for anything on pulsex it is relative to uh, you know it's an elastic supply so it can shrink or grow depending on people depositing or withdrawing right so you know keep that in mind like uh there was a question that i had a couple a couple of days ago on a private stream where um, uh, one of the users were concerned about, well, they're, you know, they're, uh, they're a whale in the, in the pool and they're slowly getting ticked away. Well, because other people are depositing into the pool, right? So um, as the pool grows, obviously, if you're not growing with the pool, you know, you're going down in the leagues or whatever. So <laughs> because the supply is elastic. Now that doesn't affect yeah. your, uh, your APY or anything like that, right? Because um, you know, if the pool is growing and the platform is growing, obviously the fees are also growing. So, you know, you're still getting a decent APY anyways. Um, but yeah, so this is one way you can play the game. You can essentially be the house and this is where you get a majority of the fees on the platform. This is 60% of the platform fees, um, by being a liquidity provider. And let's pull up the, uh, the analytics page here. Let's, let's go check it out. Uh, let's see. Nice. Yeah, so this is a pretty cool place to uh, kind of view what's going on with the famous uh, platform. You can see that we've had $32 million of volume over, I think, two weeks and uh, a couple of days. Um, and the total fees that we've had is uh, $168,000. That's hard cash, gentlemen. Okay. Got to 10x that, man. Got to pump those numbers up. 168 in only two weeks? That's, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, obviously, you know, two days ago, the market was really volatile and, you know, with more volatility comes more trading, which comes more fees, right? So, uh, the more activity that we get on the chain, especially when things are going really well, um, it could be very lucrative for, uh, you know, just the house, right. Uh, or the stakers. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, very something to consider, right? Uh, you can see that the assets under management um and uh the phlp supply it's growing right that means that the uh let's go see here yeah so the traders are losing right um over time uh just like a casino right uh naturally traders are losing um and this could be a factor of uh guys hedging their risk you know they're going short while the market is going up or they're going long 
uh, while the market is going down. Okay. Uh, these people may have uh, overexposure like Buck does to uh, the orange ecosystem. Uh, and so he decides to go short, right? And he's opening up these small insurance policies to kind of hedge his position and protect himself against the downside. Um, and it's basically like insurance policies. Now, the inverse is true for guys that want to go long, but they're in cash, right? So think about it, right? There's a lot of guys that have sold recently and uh, they could easily be going long here to protect against the upside because they're still in cash. Uh, and these people are probably happy to lose uh, if the trade goes inversely. So let's say the long guy, right? He's sitting in cash. Let's say you've got a million dollars in cash that you sold at the top because you're a Chad um, and you haven't bought back in yet. But you think that we're near a bottom. So what you could do is you could open up these long positions with a little bit of principal uh, and you can decrease your uh, exposure to the upside. Uh, and basically, you're, you know, if obviously the prices start to go up, you're it's running away from you at that point, right? So opening up a long position kind of stops your entry from running away from you. And it's a lot more easy to, um, to swallow that pill of, okay, I missed the bottom, but I open up this long and I've mitigated my, uh, my potential losses in terms of how many coins I could have bought back. Right. So you can do that. Uh, gotcha. yeah. And, um, inversely, obviously if you're exposed to the ecosystem, uh, heavily, you can open up these shorts in case you think the price is going down, right? Now, when these prices go against your positions, you're making money on the back end via, if you're, if you're holding in cash and the price goes down further, that means you're actually able to buy the bottom, okay? If you're holding RH tokens and the price goes up, but you're short, you're making money on the back end because you still have your RH tokens, right? So in these ways, hedging your risks uh, is very valuable. Uh, it's very useful. Um, you know, uh, you should get acquainted with how to use these things to, uh, you know, increase your knowledge and, uh, you know, use it to your advantage when you're, um, using these platforms. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and then moving on to open interest, right? This just means essentially, uh, the leverage that's taken out on the platform globally. Uh, you can see that, uh, today there's, uh, $1.8 million in open positions and, uh, roughly a third of that is going short and uh, two thirds of it is going long. So pretty cool. Long green candles. I don't know what those are. Get them out of my face. <laughs> I, I don't recognize them anymore. Um, yeah. I, I, I one question here before we uh, wrap up on, uh, on fatty as well, but where's the best place to buy VE fucks? Would that be on fucks? Yeah. So if you need VE PHUX, what you got to do is you'd have to, uh, provide liquidity in the prime PHUX pool, and then you'd stake it. And that's how you get, you know, uh, BE PHUX. So is it, is it not tr tradable? There's uh, no, yeah, it's, like a, market? it's like a T-share, right? So you can't, uh, oh, okay. can't buy T-shares. Uh, I mean, you buy the Maximus stuff, but the actual, you know, can't buy T-shares. You have to. Can't buy T-shares. We have a lot of derivatives. You know that. Yes. That, that's what I'd say. You yeah. can buy the Maximus stuff, yeah, yeah. And, you know, HSIs and all that stuff, but, you know, in a similar case of this, BEPHUX, you'd have to provide liquidity in the prime pub, in the prime PHUX pool, uh, and then stake that, and that's how you get the EPHUX. So, good question, good question, Alien. Um, uh, fatty, Fatty is the one. You know, the, the first one that I, I came across and started using a lot because I was kept looking at Godwell's wallets and stuff. That's like the nice. funnest thing for me on there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll go over yeah. that to to tie everything together. Yeah, so I'm not going to open up Fatty because I don't know if my wallets are on there right now. But oh, yes, okay. Fatty is a great resource for you to uh, kind of view what's going on in the market. Uh, there's like a, a main page where it shows you uh, news articles, shows you YouTube videos. Uh, it's kind of tailor made to, uh, you know, talking heads in the industry uh, and then maybe a sprinkle of legacy stuff in there. Right. But mostly you'll, you would have probably seen the RH Max stream on the news feed on Fatty. Um, you, you would have seen uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the other streamers that are on there, it just shows up in a mini news feed. Pretty cool. Um, and then obviously, uh, yeah, it's a fatty demo. So if you go to prices and media, there you go. <clears throat> Bam. So you see DCC, um, 
this kind of updates. Uh, Don't even have little, our own stream on here, Dylan. Come hourly, on. so uh, it might not show up, you know, right away, right? But it updates like hourly, intermittently, uh, maybe five hours. I, you know, it takes a while to update. But oh, I got uh, I got a tweet at least. Got the tweet. There you go. So yeah, um, you know, it's kind of tailor made for the community, but it also gives you a little bit of the outside of it, right? Uh, and then you know, right next to it, you'll see the prices in you know, kind of like the uh, the coin market cap style fashion. Um, but, uh, what you guys probably care about is pulse chain prices. Uh, I pretty much always am on that, uh, which is all the way on the right. Keep going over. Yeah. Pulse chain prices. Now this is tailor made, right? This is for us. Okay. And, uh, you know, you can see PX, pulse X, pulse chain, um, P shib. Okay. You can see who's doing the well. Yeah. So look, uh, one of the meme coins are doing pretty well right now. Right. Um, you can see good That's uh Tom Gillespie's Tom Gillespie's coin. Actually the G day one, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, uh, this is, this is your place, right? Oh, oops. One of the other main coins is, uh, performing the worst, right? Um, it's yeah. weird how they do that. It's weird how they go up and down like that. huh? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Right. Um, so yeah, this is your, your place. Now you can also go to your portfolios, which you're not signed in. So okay. maybe it doesn't show anything, but you can, um, aggregate kind of all your wall, all of your wallets. Right. And uh, you can kind of keep track of everything. Um, and that's really useful. I use that all the time. Uh, I have multiple wallets, right? And kind of aggregating them all into one place is really useful to me uh, to kind of see what I'm doing and what's going on. Uh, so, you know, I got a lot of deposits and a bunch of different addresses on fiat. Uh, and it's really easy for me to uh, get lost in which ones are which. And uh, this really helps me when, um, you know, I aggregate all of them together and stuff. So uh, using the portfolio tracker, uh, you know, it's really easy. Uh, if you need help with it, you can DM me, but generally speaking, it's pretty intuitive. You know, uh, you just follow the instructions and, uh, you can start tracking your portfolios and stuff. Yep. Yeah. If you sign in here, you can, uh, yeah, track stuff and see the cool thing about it. It doesn't only do your coins uh, across different networks, but it does like your liquidity positions and stuff. Like you said, too, it's pretty cool to, to, to see, like to get insight into what things look like, what the prices look like. You can, I mean, it's like the 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 one of the coolest uh, pro, uh, portfolio trackers I've seen as far as keeping yep. track of all the things you got going on, not just your liquid positions. Correct, and uh, you know you can see on the left we've got Fiat Fame, PHUX, uh, PHUX Tools, and then you have the Bridge, right? So um, there are people that I know that have gotten scammed from the fucking Bridge website by just googling it on on Google, right? Please, for the love of God, do not Google Pulse Chain Bridge. You will lose all your fucking money. Don't do that. All right. Um, you know, go to go on the telegram, ask for the bridge, uh, you know, the link or go to fatty and click on the bridge thing right here. Right. It'll take you to the pulse ramp or the, whatever the link is. Right. Um, don't, and, don't Google uh, naked, naked mill rat either. Don't Google that. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. And, nope. uh, um, but yeah, so be mindful of that. Use that, you know, that's an advantage that you have right to, uh, to protect yourself. Use it, um, please. Uh, but yeah, now we're, uh, what are we doing here? You go to whale watch. I was looking at what God, yeah. This is one thing that drew me to fatty was just like looking at God well and his ungodly, uh, that's only one of his wallets. Go to, go to whale watch again. Yeah. Now click on the actual word. God will. There you go. Now this is all of his wallets right? that we know of. Okay. Um, this is coming. Kind of from... Huh? Come on. Uh, I, I said pretty amazing, but then I was like, come on, load, load, load. So There's much information. Of to load, believe me. <laughs> yeah. A lot of shit. Yeah. So, so wow. he's got half a million dollars, guys. Uh, and he's got uh, shit loads of hex. Okay. Um, as you can see, he's kind of done 50 50 Ethereum and Pulse. Um, basically, this used to be worth, uh, he used to have a billion dollars, but obviously the market has gone down. So he's not worth that much now. It is a lot of money, uh, relatively speaking. But you can see. You know, he's got, uh, uh, I don't know why it's trying to load Fiat for him. He doesn't have any Fiat. I know that. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he's got Hex, P-Hex. He's got Pulse X. He's got Pulse Chain. He's got $21 million in Pulse, and he has $8 million in Pulse X. Okay. Um, it looks like he sacrificed more for Pulse X than he did for Pulse. Ouch. Um, he's got a lot of ETH still. He's got $190 million in ETH. Uh, but a lot of his position, I think, is in Hex, if I'm not mistaken, which are... Uh, I think he has if you go down. This is just what he has liquid. There you go. He's got $58 million in hex. Fucking Chad. Yeah. 
and that's at just these on prices. ETH. That's on ETH. On, on ETH at these prices too. Like imagine. Yeah. So you scroll down a little bit more, it'll you'll show you'll see the the hex position. There you go, 143. <laughs> He's got a lot of hex. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Maybe he can sell it in ten years. We'll see. Yeah. So maybe. Uh, yeah, God will. Um, he likes to buy, but he also likes to sell. Okay. Uh, he sells a little, he sells just a little bit here and there. Doesn't he sell believes in delayed gratification. Look at this. Even, even with Icos and Hedron going crazy down, he's still got over a million dollars. Oh yeah. Uh, in both, That's on both true. sides. Wait a minute. Yeah. Hedron and Icos are pretty depressed at the moment. So having a million dollars at that price, pretty impressive, man. Uh, you know, super Chad. <laughs> yeah. Super Chad. Chad. So uh, there's a bunch of different wallets on Whale Watch. Uh, you can add a wallet yourself uh, via the My Portfolios tab. And you click on, there's a, a button that says private or public. You click on public and it would show up on this page. And obviously it's voted on, uh, you know, people <laughs> voting on it. Yeah, v Vampire Jack McGoogle Von Putin. <laughs> yeah, my hacked wallet, I'm going to murder you when I find you. <laughs> like, Some personal so things in here. Yeah, this is computer, uh, or I'm sorry, community driven. So, you know, we don't, uh, uh, obviously we'll moderate it if it's like some really, really fucked up shit, right? But generally speaking, um, you know, unless you're posting like addresses, phone numbers and shit like that, it, you know, this is free game, okay? Um, so, but yeah, this is a useful resource for those that want to use it. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, Dylan. Maddie. That's that is that is the PH ecosystem. Great stuff, man. 